It occurred to me today that I'd never reviewed Pete's Dragon, so I decided this was a good opportunity to re-watch the film, and I hadn't seen this in a very long time. This is not one of my childhood favourite films, and I think one of the reasons for that, watching it now, is that it's very slow. The good bits are great, but there is one decision in it that I hate, that I think completely ruined the entire narrative. I wouldn't say it ruined the entire film, but the story certainly. But I don't think that would have affected my enjoyment as a child, as I probably wouldn't have analysed it that much. But the length is really kind of ridiculous for a children's film from the 70s. It's about two hours in length. I say children, family-friendly film. And it is very long. And there's a reason why films that are aimed at children are not that long. And it's because children generally don't have attention spans that are that great. Even now in my 30s, I don't necessarily have an attention span that's that great. So I think that might have been one of the reasons why I didn't love it. But other than that, I can't find a reason why I wouldn't have enjoyed it as a child. Because visually it's stunning, the music is great, the characters, in two in particular, are really likeable. But watching it now, I do think that they made a really, really bad decision that kind of ruined everything that Elliot seemed to stand for and made it unbelievable. One could argue that that's the magic of Disney, though. And with that in mind, it does make sense. But for me, analysing it now, maybe overanalyzing it, they made a really bad decision. And I will, with a spoiler warning, explain what that is. But I will keep this spoiler free for just now. The film, of course, was released in 1977. It's directed by Don Chaffee and Don Bluth. It's written by Malcolm Marmenstein and it stars Sean Marshall as Pete. We also have Helen Reddy as Nora and Mickey Rooney as Lampy. And Pete, of course, has a dragon called Elliot who is voiced by Charlie Callas. I say voiced, it's he doesn't speak as such. He does speak to Pete, but it's not exactly speaking with proper words. But Elliot does fully understand him. And he is, of course, an animated dragon. And the animation is just, it's beautiful. The colours for Pete's dragon, as I probably will keep calling him, um, the colour for Elliot is just stunning. The green and the purpley pink, it looks brilliant. The editing is fantastic, especially for the 70s. Visually, it's a really stunning film. Then we have the musical aspect, and I absolutely love it. The, the music is... Very engaging, very entertaining. We have some great choreography. We have a good mix of high energy songs and some that are a little slower and a little more mellow. And the songs also happen at really appropriate times as well. It's not one of those musicals where they force songs in for the sake of it. I felt like everything felt where it meant to be. Everything felt in place and I really enjoyed that part of it. The story, if you're unaware, because I realise I haven't actually explained it yet... Pete is uh, an orphan boy and he's run away and he approaches this village and he meets a woman called Nora and I love Nora. I absolutely love her. The character is just so sweet and so amazing and she takes him in when she realises that he's an orphan and Pete's dragon, I, I will keep calling him that, <laughs> Elliot, he has a name. Elliot is, well, he's quite a complex character, but in general, he exists to look after Pete, to protect Pete. He is, for all intents and purposes, Pete's imaginary friend. But, as I said, something happens that kind of ruins that. I'll talk about that in a moment. But as Pete explains, and I quote, he only goes to those who need him. And that's his explanation for why he is invisible, for why only Pete can see him. And I think he's a very sweet character and we get to see him a decent amount. But I particularly like it when we can see things that Elliot is doing, but we can't see Elliot because I think that's so well done and it's really effective and really enjoyable. And for the most part, the narrative is well written. Everything makes sense. The pacing, the pacing is generally good. It is longer than it needs to be. I'd say to begin with, I'd say the first maybe 45 minutes of the film, the pacing is very slow and it takes a long time to get anywhere. But eventually the pacing does pick up. 
and I and I really enjoyed the characters of Pete and Nora in particular. Lampy, it took me a little bit longer to get on board with, but in general, it ticks all of the right boxes, apart from the last, let's say, 15 minutes. So I will discuss in a second what I mean by that, but just very briefly to sum up, it's way longer than it needs to be, but we have some really great characters, a very sweet narrative, some beautiful animation, and gorgeous music. So generally, Pete's Dragon, while not a childhood favourite, is one that I've enjoyed watching as an adult. So huge, huge spoilers from now as I discuss what I consider to be a bad decision, and it kind of takes away what Elliot represents. So huge spoilers from now. Elliot is, of course, there to protect Pete. It is fair to assume that Pete, up until the end, it's fair to assume that Pete had created Elliot to help protect him. When Elliot was misbehaving, that was Pete acting out. Or it could be seen as Pete acting out because he's in a difficult situation, and sometimes that's how children behave when they're in a similar situation. And that would all make sense. And then at the end, and this does happen at the end, when Pete has found his new forever family, Elliot goes away because he no longer needs him. And that's the child having started to process his trauma and found comfort and security so he no longer needs to create this imaginary dragon. That makes perfect sense. However, at the end of the film, adults can see Elliot and that kind of ruins it and that just eradicates the very message that Elliot was created by Pete to protect him, to comfort him, and then it doesn't make any sense. And as I said, one could argue, well, it's Disney magic, it doesn't need to make sense. But I liked the fact that throughout the film, Elliot represented everything that Pete was feeling, everything he needed, that he wasn't getting from the world around him. I liked what it represented, what Elliot represented. And then because it took the direction that it did, the film actually said, well, no, that's not what Elliot represents at all, because the adults can see him as well, so that's not it. So I really hate the ending. Not the last couple of seconds, that's very sweet, but the last kind of 15 minutes, I I kind of hate it. I really, really hated the direction it took, because it basically said, no, Elliot is just Disney magic, and this child hasn't had the ability to protect himself through an imaginary friend. It's just Disney magic. So... Kind of hated the ending, but the rest of the film is really enjoyable. And if I just forget that that's what happens at the end, then I'd say it's a pretty magical, albeit slightly slow film. And while I can see why it wasn't a childhood favourite, I would happily watch it again. I will also watch the, the more recent remake at some point. But for now, I'm happy to have watched for the first time in a few decades, Pete's Dragon. It's not perfect but I can see why a lot of people love it.